Hi, my name is Stephen Proud. I'm a electrical designer of 25 plus years of experience. The purpose of this video is to provide you a clearer understanding and to possibly accelerate your, your job that you're working on. Enjoy. Okay, today we're going to talk about an EXEM. And we're going to have this communicating to a code assist controller over can open. So we've got our EXEM 30 configuration here. Control interfaces can open. Node is 10. Bit rate is the highest possible. Some general limitations. These are just standard things. It's important to understand that there. The record table, what records exist and don't. Um, then we get into our programming. So typically the codices controller, we have a um, we have a what we call an EXEM package. Uh, it's a it's meant to accelerate your project, and in some rare circumstances, for example, in this case with the sew machine from Schneider, the library does not work with the uh, Schneider Codices PLC. So I have created some code that will make the uh, the EXEM work in general. So with the EXCM and any of our drives, we have what we call a FHPP protocol or the Festo, it's a cyclical data exchange. Um, so it's Festo handling positioning profile. And there's just like the other controllers, there's, there's two different modes. There's record mode and there's direct mode. And there is a typical memory map the memory map is such that uh, the first two bytes of information, uh, they are set in stone and they are used to change to different modes and so on and so forth and to control the axis, start, stop, get status, so on and so forth. The byte three through eight uh, is completely depending on the mode, which is set up in the uh, these bytes over here. So depending on the mode, the bytes will represent different data um, functions or status. Okay, so because the, the library did not work, I've created my own structure here. We've got our SCON, SPAUSE, uh, and then basically I build, I build up an input and output structure um, based on, you know, there's the same record data, either record mode or direct mode, and what the data means as far as each byte goes. And then the final uh, input output data is here. And at that point, uh, we just need one tag in our global variable list. So our x-axis I'm calling it, which is really wrong. It should be called EXM because it actually has two axes. Um, let's, just, uh, let's just do a search replace here. Well, I'll do this some other time. Anyway, I've got the UD FHPP. And so this x-axis is of the type data structure that represents these two areas here. And then we have our can open manager, which is our can open master. We've got our, you know, baud rate, our node and setup here. And then our node, which we've added here, which is node 10 to match the, uh, the FCT configuration here, right here. And couple other generic things and when the, when we're finished with the mapping and bringing everything in then we have our words so we have our ccon c pause so on and so forth or input and output words four of each and i want to take those and map those to the tags so i start off by mapping them to an array so if you want to take and duplicate this code you simply change the starting address here for them and you're more or less done and in our map io 
we are mapping our array that we took our raw data from, putting it into the uh, the data structure that we've made or that I've made, and same thing with the outputs. And then this down here is depending on the operating mode because the last bytes of information here, right here, and here, and here, and here, will change based on the mode of operation which are set via these first two uh, bytes right here. So now that we have that information mapped uh, successfully, then we can start doing some programming. So on our HMI, I've added some uh, some push buttons and whatnot. So there's, there's push buttons over here. There's numeric entries over here. Everything on the right side is status. So, you know, I'll show you this running later. Up top here, we've got an auto mode, auto cycle reset, and then we've got a direct mode or a record mode sequence. And what that does is when auto mode is on, it will run uh, either direct or record mode sequence. So that's this move or this uh, subroutine here, one of these two routines. The auto cycle reset will reset it so that you start over and initialize everything, so on and so forth. So, um, Auto manual just does some resetting of variables as well as you know executing certain routines. Um, when we get to record mode, um, we're simply going to enable the drive so that we can have movement possible. We confirm that it is enabled and able to move. Uh, at that point, we do a, a start homing. Okay. We acknowledge the start, turn off the start homing, wait for the reference bit. Now, I do this in this routine just because it's there. Uh, typically, you would only do this one time after power cycle, and that's because there's incremental encoders in there, um, and you have to do that. So it's a necessity at some point when you power up. Um, this right here is the operating mode. That's uh, setting it to direct mode because we're actually setting it to uh, a record mode when this is true then you're in direct mode so this is really a, a typo here should be set to record mode confirm that the record mode has been set and then at this point it's waiting for move information so we have this record number set this to whatever record you want to execute in here so that is the record table right here so whatever you've programmed in here, that's what you're calling at this time. Then you turn on the start positioning bit. And before I do this, let me just show you one thing here. Um, timing, di timing diagram. So this is a, a, a generic timing diagram. This is part of this manual right here. And Basically, you set point, you set set the either the if you're in direct mode, you would set up the targets for x and y, and the velocity, and then you would turn on the start bit. You wait for the acknowledge bit. Motion complete will go off at that point. Only when the acknowledge has been uh, considered, do you turn off the start bit, and then wait for the motion complete to turn on. Um, so you've got some handshaking going on here. So the code I have is identical. You know, you set the record number, turn the start positioning bit on, wait for the acknowledge, turn the start bit off, and then wait for the position complete. Done. And that's how every move is. And there's just a variety of moves here. You know, we're executing move number one there, move three there, uh, move four there, five, and then you can keep adding to this. Um, when it comes to direct mode moves, it's basically the same idea. You are turning the drive on so that it's able to move. You're confirming that it's on, executing a home. Again, the home only has to be done once on power up. I just put it in the cycle just for the heck of it. Um, the axis is referenced now in the operating mode for direct mode. That's true. And here we have direct mode. Okay, so we're a little more flexible in direct mode because you know you can store everything here as far as the target values and the velocity for each movement. So you know you set up your 
your velocity, which is in millimeters per second. Uh, you give your x and y a target position. Um, the values in units are explained here. Uh, this here is either representing a absolute move or a relative move. Uh, for this case, case sample, I'm only doing absolute moves. And once we've set all that up, we turn on the start positioning bit. And we go through the same sequence where we get the acknowledged start. Once we get the acknowledged start, we're supposed to turn off start positioning. I don't know why I didn't do that. So motion complete. And then we move on to the next one. And the same thing, we set up some new values, new variables. And I'm just going to fix this right here. As soon as I get the acknowledge start, I can turn off the, the uh, start positioning. And that's it. Okay, so again, every move is the same, except you're just changing the the values for each you know variable. So we have that all set up. Um, these these steps, which is just a case sequence. If you don't understand what a case sequence is, you know, execute case direct mode cycle. Um, I'm using enum enumerations here. It's just you know some standard way of setting some stuff without having to put numbers on them. Um, you can elaborate on this and continue to add more enumerations and change your cycle and do whatever you want. So I'm going to log in here, save the values. Typically you always want to do a clean all, rebuild, and generate code. Um, it's important, of course, to to know how to, you know, set your you know, scan that at work. Make sure that we have the right active PLC. And log in. Say yes. So now we have controller. It's in stop mode. Hit the F5. Get thing into run mode. We're running. We have comms up and running as well. Now we're going to open up our HMI. So right off the bat, we have a fault. If I go online to the controller, uh, no. I want to see what this is. Can node guarding fault? Um, right here, if I hit the reset error, it now reset the fault. Okay. The fault number 255 is actually means no errors. So the previous fault number was a valid one if I can't open. And. Uh, like I said before, I can come in here. I can enable the drive manually, of course. I can uh, put some speed in here. Put a target in here. Uh, if I want to move to 15, uh, it's always 0.1. So 15 is 15 millimeters and 55. Millimeters is that one there, and I'm going to be in direct mode. It should give me an error because I have not homed right here. See how axis rep is not on? So I'm going to start positioning. And right off the bat, I get a fault. Fault number is 40. If I go to the faults here. Should say something about homing. Uh, 40 is probably decimal. Uh, where is the 40 decimal? Sorry, I went by it already here. So homing required. So there you go. So that 40 there is in fact the 40 right here that we see. Uh, I'm just going to reset the fault. And turn off this. Everything's rising edge. So if I hit the start homing, it homes. Axis is referenced. Now I can simply 
call the same move I just tried before, and it should execute it. And it did. So this is the actual position over here. Turn this off, it's all rising edge. Okay, so you can play with these here. You get status, you can try things the way you want to. And then if we want to execute one of these two sequences here, you put the system into auto, and you pick the sequence type you want to run here. So if you pick direct mode and hit the reset cycle, you should home it. It's just homing right now, and now it's executing. So we're in direct mode, so if I come into here, you'll see that these the steps here are changing as we fly through things here, and it's executing a variety of things. If I turn this code off, hit reset, go to record mode, now it's homing again. And now you see down here, four, five, six, one, five, six, it's executing the record numbers itself. Okay. And that is basically showing you how to use the code that I have for a snippet and what it does and so on and so forth. Um, anything else worth noting is that the code itself has no error recovery or diagnostics. It's just a sample. So if you want to add can open communication diagnostics and things like that, that's all up to you. Okay, thank you for listening, and hopefully this helps you. Thanks.